Do you know that you, as a home investor buyer, you can purchase the property with a minimum of 25% down payment, and it can be done under your personal name or LLC? Stay with me. Here you will find out more detail about it and the requirement. Hi, I am Adam Maisonet. Florida Real Estate License and member for the National Association of Realtors, representing premium property real estate services here in Orlando. We are in the Sir Philip, and today I have the pleasure to interview Mr. John Brute Edgar, Director for International Mortgage Associate. How are you, John? I'm very good, thank you, Mar uh, Ara, and thank you for the opportunity. Excellent. John, can you tell us a little bit more about International Mortgage Associate sure. and how long been in the market? Yeah, sure. So uh, we've been around since 2007. So uh, we, we've been through uh, the, the rough time and coming out the other yeah. side. Uh, we did for, uh, change name in 2013 to International uh, Mortgage Associates. Uh, we have four loan originators. Uh, one uh, of those is a Spanish and Portuguese speaker. Uh, and we have relationships with probably, uh, uh, in, uh, for foreign national lenders, probably around about 15 lenders. So that means your specialization produce will be foreign national? Yeah, we do, do, we do domestic uh, uh, and we're quite successful at that as well. But um, our primary um, uh, core business is, is uh, foreign national. Foreign national, mm -hmm. excellent. Um, John, can you tell us a little bit more about the underwriting style for your products? Yeah, well, the two products that we we uh, we have are uh, second homes. Uh, so that's where uh, a foreign investor wants to buy a property here as a second home with very little personal use. Uh, the other type of property that we would do is an investment property uh, where the, it's the opposite. They they uh, they have very little personal uh, personal use. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, I'll, I'll I'll go back. Second home purchase is mm -hmm. where there's very little uh, rental. Okay. Uh, uh, and they have the property for their own personal use and the investment property is uh, is where they have very little personal use and mainly rent the property out. So basically the distinction for being in independent categories will be if the house is going to be used to rent and um, in the long term or short term rentals Correct. or also or it could be for them to use common joy Florida and it's still living in Correct. the other unit contract. Correct, yeah. Okay, yeah. so based on that, what they could requirements is gonna change um, depending on the program. Yes, that's right. Okay, excellent, John. So can you tell us a little bit more about what it could be the essential requirement if mm -hmm. the buyer wants to do the financing using as a second home? Yeah, so, so the, uh, the three uh, main criteria for underwriting second home or investment property is, is uh, firstly, uh, um, full document. Okay. So that's where the, 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 the lender uh, or the buyer will have to verify uh, all of their income, all of their assets, all of their liabilities. Uh, they might have to provide uh, credit reports, uh, credit references, that type of thing. Uh, second option would be to go down the stated income route. Stated income means that uh, it's pretty much the same as uh, the full document loan, but uh, there is no requirement for proof of income. That's going to be fantastic. Yeah, because uh, you know, for self-employed people uh, uh, and people that might be relying on the rental income itself, mm -hmm. uh, that that can all be taken into account on that type of type of loan. Uh, the third uh, type of underwriting is is basically a very light document loan, and and um, you know that 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 would include just maybe providing uh, ID, uh, proof of where you live, proof of source of funds, which is very important from anti-money laundering perspective, uh, and that's pretty much pretty much it. The process, how long can it take into from the beginning of the financing mm -hmm. all the way to the end? Okay, so obviously on a full document loan it's going to take slightly longer because you've got a lot more documentation to prove um, um, in terms of income, assets, liabilities, etc. I would, I would anticipate a closing time frame of around about 45 to 55 days on that. Uh, on a stated income, because you don't have to verify your income, uh, that that will take a, a little lo a little less time, maybe uh, thirty five to forty five days. Mm -hmm. And the light document loans we can do from you know kind of twenty five to thirty five days. 
That's great because that way the buyer can be prepared and inspecting and also the real estate can be prepared and inspecting what is going to be the uh, projected closing day for any deal that they yeah. are working on it. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Um, John, tell me a little bit more about when you as a loan officer um, can guide the buyer and say, okay, it would be the best if the financing it will be under your name as an individual or it's going to be under LLC. Yeah, so, so uh, one of the first parts of the process would be to get people pre-qualified. So we need to know a little bit about their circumstances. And once we've pre-qualified them, and I'm usually be a we're able to pre-qualify people within maybe 24 hours, um, sometimes less, uh, maybe no more than 48 hours. Um, so once we've pre-qualified them, we get a much better insight as to um, uh, uh, their, s their overall circumstances, mm -hmm. and then we can point them in the direction of which loan we think is going to suit their purposes best, whether that be a full document loan, whether that be stated income, uh, uh, or whether that be a no document loan. So uh, we would always put those three options in front of them uh, and um, provide them with uh, rates, uh, costing quotes, uh, etc., so that they can make their own mind up as to which way they think is the best route for them. Uh, one of those options was obviously, as you mentioned, going to mm -hmm. be whether they buy in their personal name, uh, whether they buy in the name of uh, an okay. LLC. And there's advantages and disadvantages to both, uh, and we would run through those advantages and disadvantages, and they would then choose whether they wanted to do it in the name of an LLC or in personal name. Most lenders that we deal with will accept either. What do you think is the most important, or, or basically the standard um, difference between um, going with a personal OLC. If the buyer tell you a specific comments, okay, I think this person definitely it will be the best going through the LLC. Mm -hmm. But which is that important um, part for you to determine which is going to be the best fit? Uh, some some countries, for for example, Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, th if they uh, speak to a CPA, I think most CPAs would, would uh, advise a Canadian buyer to buy in, th in the name of an LLC, uh, but there are certain advantages in doing that for other nations as well. Okay. Um, you know, asset protection being probably the, the, the biggest one, mm -hmm. um, which, which basically means that if uh, uh, s something happens and there's a lawsuit, for example, then they, c they, can't, pr they can't attack the asset outside or the assets that that person or client owns outside the name of the LLC. Definitely, that's it's very important. That's uh, probably one of the biggest. Yes, mm -hmm. and the good thing is you know and you can guide them through that process and have the chance to explain to them what mm -hmm. is going to be the best suite for them, which is fantastic because well sometimes they, they, they have a lot of questions, they need, mm -hmm. they need to understand completely the process. Yeah. And us as an agent, we also need to understand what is going to be the determination for you as a lender, mm -hmm. um, guide our, our, cl our clients to Correct. which is going to be the fixed product. And, w and, w and we w when it comes to uh, the viability of, a, uh, of an LLC, we would always uh, kind of try and work with uh, a, a, an accountant uh, or a tax advisor uh, so that they uh, are getting the best advice as to from a tax perspective whether that works for them or not. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's move in quickly about the closing process. Mm -hmm. Tell me, um, I, it's going to be basically general for both cases, the same for the closing process. Exactly. Well, but what is the most important for you if the buyer can be here um, to attend physically to the closing? Well, the, the, the two options are, uh, you, as you've just mentioned, one to, to fly in and actually mm -hmm. close at the title company. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, and that's for me would be the preferred option because. Uh, you get the opportunity to sit down with the realtor, you get the opportunity to sit down with the, uh, the, us as the mortgage broker uh, and uh, ask any questions that might come out of the closing documents because the closing package is relatively big, maybe about 100 pages and uh, it's a good idea to, if you have any questions, to, to have somebody, to, be addressed to, to have the professionals yeah. that, are, that, 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 that have been involved in the process involved at the closing because if you have any questions, they're there to answer them. Yes, yeah, I agree with you. It could mm. be a challenge for, for mm -hmm. the buyer um, going to that one. So and also there's additional consideration that oh well, the we the need to work. Also the mail away as, oh, as the well. Mail the mail away um, is where the uh, you can't make it over here. You have to fly over. Uh, so you, And you can't make that 
uh, a, a meeting so we can get the title company to email you the documents. You then have to print off the 100 documents. Quite often you'll, e you'll need to go to uh, a US embassy, although we have one lender that doesn't require that. You can go to a normal notary, but generally uh, the rule of thumb is that you you would have to go and uh, uh, to the to the uh, U U.S. embassy mm -hmm. in the country that you're in, right. book an appointment to go and see them, and use their notary right. services. The downside of doing that is that the cost is almost as expensive as flying over here yes. because you have notary fees at sixty sixty uh, pounds or dollars a. Uh, uh, per page, uh, you've also might need to book a, a overnight accommodation, etc. So the costs mount up on that one. Mm -hmm. uh, you then have to scan all the documents back and then post them FedEx overnight so they get back to the title company it promptly. Um, that that would be the less preferred. Route. I know, and for us as a real estate agent, we need to be aware because probably the closing could be extended <coughs> if they don't get the appointment on time with Correct. the embassy yep. um, uh, to the to do the closing with yep. the specific date that we already pre-selected in terms of contract. Um, uh, John, tell us a little bit more about additional consideration um, about uh, this process. Yeah, so obviously, uh, quite often these things get overlooked in the process. Uh, um, opening a US bank account is a, is a, is a key one because uh, you can't pay uh, a US mortgage from abroad. So you mm -hmm. will need a, a US, need to open a US bank account to facilitate the payments on the new mortgage. Yes. Okay, so that's important um, and either your realtor or the mortgage broker will be able to help you uh, um, uh, sort out an account with the, the right bank. Um, uh, the next one would be uh, transferring uh, the money mm -hmm. effectively uh, uh, because generally a bank to bank transfer is less efficient from a currency point of view yes. than transferring it through a currency exchange company. So uh, we would always recommend that you uh, transfer any down payment uh, uh, or closing costs or whatever uh, and, and transfer that through a currency transfer company. So here, be, in order it's to much be ready. It's much more efficient than doing it that way. Uh, obviously, taxes. Um, uh, one, once you buy a property over here, and especially if it's a re uh, if it's an investment property, mm -hmm. um, uh, you're probably going to need to uh, engage the services of a tax preparer. Yes. Uh, because y you're going to have income, you're going to have expenses, uh, and you need to report those to the IRS. Definitely, uh, that's very important part. Mm -hmm. So, Jon, this has been fantastic information, mm -hmm. and uh, I want to appreciate and thank you to you to you for sharing with us these valuable um, details regarding international financing program. Sure. And for me, it has been a pleasure to be here with you today. And for the audience, thank you for be here with us. Please share and comment our video, and stay tuned. We have more information to share with you. So, see you to the next one. Bye-bye. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you, John. Appreciate it.